and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so I'm here today on behalf of I4, and I'm going to be talking about uh, monitoring comprehensive approaches to dog population management, and in particular, research that we've done um, to look at the question of how we're actually doing. So companion animal welfare is still a relatively new area of work and research. Even more recent is the use of a comprehensive approach in relation to dog population management. Uh, in 2008, uh, the ICAM Coalition produced the Humane dog, uh, Humane dog Population Management Guidelines, which you all have in your delegate packs and I'm sure you've all read by now. Um, these guidelines clearly define what are now generally considered to be the key elements that make up what we call a comprehensive approach. And these elements are these eight. Um, additionally, whilst not specifically an element of a comprehensive approach, community and stakeholder engagement and involvement is also a fundamental component of, uh, and should be integrated throughout any dog population management process. Um, at this point, when we talk about the methodology and dog population management, I just want to acknowledge the underlying principles of ICANN methodology, in particular to a comprehensive approach. So there's no one-size-fits-all solution. There's no single intervention that works in all situations. Every situation is different. So when we talk about these eight elements of a comprehensive approach, there are a range of tools that we can use based on an assessment of each individual situation. And we might not need all eight for an approach to be effective. The only universal concept is that a comprehensive program should focus on root causes and not solely on treating the symptoms. <clears throat> so, we've developed this methodology. We believe it's the right approach and we're all aware of the work going on around the world with dog population management issues. But when it comes to monitoring and evaluating our impact and effectiveness, when it comes to knowing whether using a comprehensive approach is really making the difference that we believe it should, how are we doing? How much material is actually out there that supports and validates this comprehensive approach? Well, it turns out, not that much. Um, we undertook a review to look across the entire companion animal sector and establish exactly what kind of data is out there that demonstrates the use and benefit of a comprehensive approach. Something that could show us that what we're doing is having measurably positive results. Now I should make the point here um, <clears throat> that no one is suggesting that the premise of a comprehensive approach is incorrect and we should all just go out and build a giant shelter. Um, this review process was simply to see exactly what's out there that demonstrates what we believe to be true, that a comprehensive approach is an effective approach. So the research. <clears throat> we started with desk-based research and identified published and unpublished data from companion animal projects around the world and we used four different sources to access this data. Using broad search terms a total of 3,739 papers, reports and articles were identified up until September 2014. Search terms were all in English um, and used multiple derivations of companion animal and dog classification along with references to stray owned or roaming animals. And then it also looked for terms that would indicate uh, management or control of populations. Using such wide terms to ensure that we uh, gathered as much data as possible, we had to go through some filtering of the results. So, to begin with, any duplications uh, for searches were excluded. Um, as the term companion animals sometimes refer to cats, they had to go as well. And additionally, anything that referred only to pet dogs or dog behavior or wild canine populations, such as prairie dogs, wolves or foxes, also excluded. And we needed a cutoff point as well. So any papers written prior to the year 2000 uh, were also excluded from the results. After this filtering, <clears throat> we ended up with 302 papers which fulfilled the criteria that we'd set out and appeared to contain a reference to some elements of a comprehensive approach. Um, it's all very pretty and multicolored out there and I'll explain what that mess is in a, little in a moment. 
Um, we also um, did something called expert referral, and what that is is, as well as the desk-based research, we asked people in the field, people who were actually on the ground working on projects, if they knew of projects which they thought, in their experience, demonstrated a good comprehensive approach. 22 projects were suggested by these experts. Uh, a few had already been identified through uh, the desk-based research, but most hadn't. The next stage was to conduct a full content review of these papers and projects and look at the various different aspects of their content. <clears throat> we looked at locations to see which places were producing the most information. Data came in from 66 different countries, as well as data that had wider regional or international coverage. Two highest producers were India and Brazil. We looked at areas of focus to see whether the project itself um, had a distinct focus or whether it was actually the paper that had the distinct focus. Papers that focused on rabies had the highest number followed by uh, sterilization and surveying uh, and then other zoonoses. And interestingly this mirrors where the funding for dog population management has traditionally been. <coughs> we looked at citations each paper uh, to see where the, uh, the work was having the greatest amount of interest and what seemed to be the most influential. Papers on zoonoses were the most cited and uh, one paper in particular, Human Behaviour and the Epidemiology of Parasitic Zoonosis, cited 198 times. So apparently if you only read one paper on the uh, Human Behaviour and Epidemiology of Parasitic Zoonosis this year, make sure it's this one. Uh, or don't. Um, Paper, uh, papers on sterilization and human wildlife conflict, also fairly well cited, but the few papers that were purely on dog population management were barely cited at all. Um, we also acknowledged the amount of research being published was increasing year on year, <clears throat> with six papers back in 2000 to 21 in the first eight months of 2014. And remember, these papers are specifically regarding elements of comprehensive approach. There are obviously many other papers on behavior and population dynamics that were excluded from this because they weren't relevant to the results that we were looking for. And then finally, we looked at the comprehensiveness of the papers and the projects. We looked to see which of the eight elements were incorporated whether a particular element was a major component or focus of the paper, a minor one, or whether it didn't mention it at all. Red is a major focus, yellow is a minor, and um, uh, if it's blank, it's no focus at all. So for example, if we look over here, um, this is sterilization, uh, was a major focus of this paper, um, whereas uh, vaccination was, was less. So they were focusing more on the sterilization, but they were looking a little bit about vaccinating as well. It was, it was tagged on as a secondary thing. In comparison to this one here, where the vaccination on uh, rabies probably was uh, a major component, but there was also a bit of sterilization that they mentioned as well. And so that's how this um, comprehensiveness chart works. <clears throat> Interestingly, it was the projects suggested by experts that had the most comprehensive approach. It seems to indicate that within the sector, we know where the best work is happening, even if the information from projects isn't getting published or being shared widely. So while at first it seemed there was an awful lot of data available, it became clear that there's actually very little information out there about the successes or failures of specific, uh, failure specific approaches to dog population management and in particular to comprehensive approaches. This is likely due to two factors. Uh, many projects are still focusing on those interventions that aren't fully adopting a comprehensive approach or those that are doing so aren't collecting or sharing the data. It's actually probably a combination of both of those things. But it's clear that there's information out there. It's just not being gathered and shared as it should be and this is something that we need to address. Uh, if we can approach these projects in a way that monitors and evaluates them more consistently, more effectively, and actually share that information, then we can significantly increase the speed in which we adapt and improve our work. And in doing so, we improve the lives of the dogs around the world and the communities that they live with. And so this is where my research dovetails neatly with Ellie Hibby's project. Um, the Indicators project has been created to help us do exactly that to develop guidance on the monitoring and evaluation of dog population management projects, which will allow us to capture and share the data that we so desperately need. Um, 
So um, thank you uh, for now. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please come and speak to me afterwards. But uh, I'm now going to hand over to Ellie, who will um, take you through the indicators project. Thank you.